Oh boy, boy, <laughs> Ooh, wow. Anyway, YouTube, team keep it clean. Let me start off by saying this. I've said this plenty of times before, but I have to reiterate it again because some people still don't get it. It is okay. It does not make you any more or any less of a fan to be able and willing to call the team out for when they make mistakes because they make mistakes. They do not do everything perfectly. Yes, they are a well-run organization. They do a lot of stuff great, but sometimes they have hiccups. Sometimes they mess up straight up. Sometimes they make some bad decisions and it does everything doesn't work out for them. And that's okay. Like I said before, and I just said this yesterday, we can acknowledge when they do things great. We can also acknowledge when they don't do things so well either. And in this case, shout out to Dalen Hayes. Dalen Hayes is the sole survivor of the fifth round for the Ravens this year. Because, as we know, Sean Wade, a pick and a, tr a trade that I didn't like. A pick that I liked. A trade that I didn't like. But I understood. He is now on the New England Patriots. And then, <laughs> Ben Mason. A pick who... I was whatever about, but I understood after realizing that Pat Ricard was on the last year of his deal. Okay, Ben Mason, he gonna be uh, the he gonna be the the runner up to Pat Ricard once his deal expires because I don't expect the Ravens to resign Pat Ricard next year. And guess what? And then they, okay, they they draft him, then they cut him because it's like okay, yeah, he's gonna clear waivers. I expected him to clear waivers. The Ravens expected him to clear waivers. Y'all expected him to clear waivers. We all expected him to clear waivers. And what did he do? He cleared waivers, so we were all right. Everybody was right on this one, <laughs> but not the Ravens, because Ravens expected him to clear waivers and be like, all right, hey, come through, come through, come on back. But Harbaugh, when asked about <laughs> Ben Mason, because we saw all these people popping up on the practice squad today, we saw all these people coming back to practice today, and everybody looking around, wait a minute, where's Ben Mason? Where'd Ben Mason go? Why Ben Mason ain't show up? And when they asked Harbaugh about it, he said he could announce his own plans. So, hashtag Petty Harbaugh came out today. And you know when, when hashtag Petty Harbaugh comes out, oh yeah, something ain't sitting right with him. Something is not sitting right with him. And we were all wondering, and everybody, I see all Ravens community and all Ravens Twitter and all Ravens, all that, just talking about Ben Mason. What happened with Ben Mason? What's going on with Ben Mason? And we, we knew and figured he wasn't going to be part of the plans this year. But now he's not even part of the team because he went and signed with the New England Patriots practice squad. So he cleared waivers, but he declined. or. He most likely declined. I can't say that he declined Ravens their offer yet because it hasn't been said officially that they offered him something. But you got to figure with Harbaugh's wording and with them releasing him that they expected him to clear and make it back to the practice squad. Like what happened with Trace McSorley, Benjamin Vick, with all, everybody. I don't feel like going through the list right now. But you got to figure like that, that they because they have three spots left. They got three practice squad spots left. One of those is going to be from Josh Bynes. And another one was going to be Ben Mason. Another one probably going to be a running back. But <laughs> now you got an extra spot. <laughs> you got to put that little positive spin on it, right? Hey, now we got an extra spot. Because Ben Mason, he's taking up a spot with the New England Patriots. And you know what? I'm, I'm not mad at it at all. Ben Mason felt like, he, he was probably like, man, why y'all drafted me? And y'all really got me going through all this? Like, you know what? Nope, New England. But I'm sure with Ben Mason, what he figured and is true, maybe with the Patriots, he felt like, mm, I can actually have an opportunity to play right here, right now. With the Ravens, I'm not going to get that. I'm not going to get that because they have Patrick Ricard. I know Patrick Ricard. I've seen Patrick Ricard. I understand the business of the NFL, even for the short amount of time that I've been in the NFL. And I know that there's hardly any teams right now keeping one fullback on a roster. Why would a team keep two? Even a team that is the, the most 
run dominant team in the league by far, why would they keep two? Oh, answer, they not. They wouldn't. They won't. So we we knew that this whole him getting cut. I Again, y'all know I thought he was going to be IR stashed. That's what I thought was going to happen. I thought he was going to walk past Harbaugh's office one day and he was going to sneeze the wrong way and Harbaugh would say, oh, nope, mm-mm. Nope, that's it. Hey, he broke his elbow. Injury reserve. From sneezing. Harbaugh would put that, that he broke his elbow. And then put him on IR, out for the season. All right, see you next year. That's what I thought was going to happen. But this, when they cut him, it was like, okay, well, that's not a shock either. But I think Ravens are certainly shocked uh, that he ended up choosing New England over them. But and it sounded like, from the quote, I didn't get to see the video. I didn't get to hear the audio. But just from the quote alone, um, it seems as if Harbaugh may be a bit upset because this was not in the Ravens' plans. And like I said at the beginning of this video, it does not make you any less of a fan. It does not make you any less of a person if you are, are not afraid to call out the Ravens' mistakes. It's okay. It is okay. Ravens are not the perfect organization. There's no perfect organization. It's not. Now, make sure, one thing to always remember, too, if you're going to call them out for the bad, you better acknowledge the good, too. And there's a, there's a lot of good. So There's a whole lot of good. There's a way, way more good than bad. But y'all already know on here, we talk about both. We, we talk about both extensively because both need to be acknowledged. Both need to be acknowledged for sure. So the whole thing with Sean Wade, yeah, I, I hope he balls out. I know a lot, some, there were some Ravens fans that brought up to Sean Wade in the preseason game, the last play of that game. Where they were, oh, man, see, ha, Eric DaCosta winning again. Look at that. We traded this guy away. We got draft picks for this guy. He wasn't even going to make our team. Look And look at that. He almost cost the team the game. He gives up a touchdown on the last play of the game. Ha, <laughs> ha, Eric DaCosta winning, baby. But it was clearly an offensive passing offense. Clear as day. A lot of people didn't want to acknowledge that. Clear as day. Sean Wade did his thing throughout that game. But that one play, they wanted to cherry pick that one play and be like, okay, ha, Eric DaCosta, he's the winner. But then even the follow, no, nobody showed the following play, though. Because the following play, which wasn't an offensive passing offense, he stopped the wide receiver on a two-point conversion. He stopped it. And that ended up winning the team the game. But nobody talked about that. Because they didn't want to acknowledge the Ravens' mistakes. Again, it does not make you any less of a fan. You should not feel bad. You should not. You, you don't need to. Don't feel bad for calling them out on their mistakes because the Ravens make mistakes. They do it. It happens. It's okay. We all make mistakes. We do it. They happen. It's okay. And it's all right to acknowledge him. Just like with Ben. And then with um, Ben Bredesen. Ben Bredesen. They literally picked this guy last, last year in the fourth. In the fourth round. But that's that. They moved on. And now, the, and depending on who you talk to, they'll have their own spin on it. Depending on who you talk to. Now, me and a lot of conversations that I had with a lot of people over the past 24 hours since all of this different stuff has been going down. One thing that I said, which is true, and, and, and you could tell it's the Ravens way of thinking, and there's nothing wrong with it. The more shots that you take, man, the more shots that you take, the more chances you have to hit. The more draft picks you have, the more chances you have to hit on those picks. And it's true. But that's why Ravens keep stockpiling picks. They keep racking them up. And they're like, hey, we too. some of these guys got to work out. Because they do. Some, something's got to give. But then at the same time, you can still make mistakes. You can still make mistakes. There have been some people that have been like, um, <sighs> what did they say? Oh, it, it just slipped my memory. Mm, mm, mm. Um, now nah, I can't even remember it. My apologies. It was just, it was just right here, and, and then it, and it just vanished. But people have been putting a spin on this thing uh, with Eric DeCosta, with Ben Bredesen, uh, with Sean Wade, uh, and of course, there's the part where, yeah, at least you're getting something f rather than nothing, and that's that's a beautiful thing. 
That's that's really a beautiful thing. Oh, that's what it is. It just came back to me. They've been like, all right, well, well, shout out to the Ravens and whatnot because they they're not wasting any time with these draft picks. If the draft picks ain't working out right away, then they're not afraid to move on. So and yeah, that is true. But does every draft pick do the they all develop at the same rate? Does every draft pick automatically make that impact in the NFL? Is every single draft pick even NFL ready? Is every single draft pick ready to contribute right away like that? No. They don't develop at the same rate either. No. So again, Ravens make mistakes. Doesn't make them a bad team. Doesn't make you a bad person for saying it. Mistakes happen. Things happen. It's life. It is what it is. I still love the Ravens. I'll call them out on their mistakes. I still love y'all. Y'all call me out on my mistakes. It happens. If you didn't call somebody out for when they do wrong, do you really love them? Think about it. Like, you don't want to just be walking around with a bunch of yes men and yes women and yes, yes, yes. Oh, I did something wrong? Is, is it? A, is, what, where did I mess up at? Oh, no, you didn't do anything wrong. It's okay. It's fine. You don't want that. You don't need that. That's unhealthy for you. So... <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Ben Mason. Ben Mason, go 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 get your playing time, man. Um, I I hope he does well in New England. Uh, I hope he goes over there and does his thing, and, and he really does get his opportunity. Um, I don't anticipate the Ravens playing the Patriots this year. You never know how playoffs could work out. You just never know. Um, but we'll see. We'll we'll, we'll definitely uh, when we see that. What is Sean Wade's number? Twenty nine with New England? Oh, no, no, twenty six. Twenty six, I think. So when we see that 26 and when we see whatever Ben Mason's number is going to be, we'll be uh, keeping a special eye on the both of them. Team, keep it clean. I appreciate y'all. I love y'all. <laughs> Just like two of Ravens' three fifth round picks from this year, this year, 2021. They just picked these. They were rookies. Three rookies. Well, two out of three rookies. Two out of the three picks, fifth round picks from this year. Just like two out of the three, y'all, with Sean Wade and Ben Mason, I'm out. <laughs>